Prague is a city on which history has left few visible scars. Even the bombs of World War II never struck here. And of its most recent military conflict, the Russian-led takeover of 1968, these days there's little to be seen or heard. There were signs of the occupation all over Prague, she says. On the right, people were free. On the left, there were tanks. It was difficult. The violent suppression of Prime Minister Alexander Dubček's attempt to reform Soviet communism into socialism with a human face changed the daily lives of almost everyone in what is now the Czech Republic. There were huge lines of people, she says, buying things like mad, sugar and flour. I had no idea what was going on. My parents were shocked. Part of the shock was resuming the communist lockstep that Prague Spring was meant to loosen. For this sheet music seller's mother, a school teacher, it meant making her classes rigidly politically correct, notwithstanding an ugly reality that every Czech could see. For my mother, she says, it was very hard to get ready for the new year of teaching, to get it clear in her head how to explain to the kids what was going on. What to communicate about political reality, what to tell the children. Even today, in 2008, with the Czech Republic now a post-communist democracy, those are still hard questions. For much of the world, those newsreel images shot in and around Prague's Wenceslas Square in 1968 are among the most unforgettable icons of the 20th century. How ironic that here in the Czech Republic, the events behind those pictures have been in increasing danger of being forgotten. A large number of students will complete their secondary education without any knowledge of what was happening after 1945. They have no idea about 1968. Martina Kolikova produces documentaries about the communist oppression and shows them in the Czech public schools, where she says few of the students know much about history. They definitely seem to be taken aback by what they see. Very often we get the reaction, we had no idea these things were happening in our country. Most students don't see Kolikova's documentaries. Respected Prague pollster Jan Hartl says that's too bad. The students could use information about 1968. They don't know much about it and they don't care much about it. Uh, why they don't know much about it? The answer is that their teachers, uh, the, perhaps their parents, were quite often so compromised with the regime that they don't feel free to talk about, uh, about that. Duck. Political scientist Zenek Sporl says Czech youth uneducated about history have fallen prey to political extremism. In every you can find uh, some uh, this very sharp opponents of the system but with the great um, inclination to the, to the extremist uh, attitudes. The skinheads are singing we have to destroy this bloody culture of 1960s. Forty years after 1968, the post-communist Czech Republic is both freer and richer than before. Still polls show Czechs, young and old, are cynical and angry about political cronyism and corruption. Politics is becoming, like history, something for Czechs to forget about. I'm Dave Marish for World Focus in Prague.